Happy Resurrection Sunday. We're so glad you're tuning in to us today on this Easter Sunday. I don't know where you're coming from. I don't know where you are today, whether you're at home, whether you're in the hospital, the nursing home. But we're so glad that you you have made the choice to be a part of our Easter celebration here uh, at ICC because Jesus is alive forevermore. And with all that's going on in our world, I'm so thankful for his word that he is alive, he is alive, he is alive. And that's why we have hope today because we don't serve a dead God, we serve a living God. And we're just going to expect God to do great things in your home, in in your life, uh, in in Staten Island. We're just so thankful that there is a God that's the same yesterday, today, and forever. I want to encourage you to take your your phone and to share uh, the ICC Facebook page to to all of your family and friends. Uh, Let's let's get it as many people watching these services today that we possibly can because Jesus is going to touch people. Jesus is going to save people because he is the great I am. I want to read this morning from Matthew chapter 28. And we read there, after the Sabbath at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning. His clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the woman, do not be afraid for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. And here's the good news of Easter. He is not here. He has risen just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, he has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him, now I have told you. So the woman hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them, greetings, he said, They came to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. This Easter Sunday is a little different probably than any Easter Sunday we've ever had. But right where you are, you can begin to worship the Lord and to lift up his name. And because he lives, we can face tomorrow. And we can worship him because he is alive and we can meet him and we can see him and we can sense him. And he is alive today and that's the good news of Easter. Why don't we open our hearts in prayer and let's just welcome the presence of the Lord to minister to you, minister in our service to know that if God be with us, who can be against us? So Father, we want to thank you, Lord, that Lord, that you rose again on the third day. We thank you, Lord, that during this Easter season, we can worship you and exalt you and glorify you. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that you're not on the cross and you're not in the tomb, but on that third day, you rose again. And Lord, because of that, Lord, we can have life and have it more abundantly. So Lord, today I pray your blessing over every home, every family, the hospital, nursing homes, wherever people are watching us. I pray that they would experience the living Savior and to know that if God is for us, who can be against us? So just bless the service, we pray. And Lord, we'll give you all the glory for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to worship the Lord this morning. Why don't you just sing in your home? Why don't you just spend some time worshiping and praising him? Because he's worthy of our praise today. We love to call your name. It's something we cannot explain. Proclaim your great name, your great name. We love to call your name. It's something we cannot explain. That happens when we proclaim your great name. Your great name. Call your name, it's 
cannot explain that happens when we proclaim your great name your great name king jesus no other name king jesus much stronger we can call on you things changes we can call on your name yeah king jesus no other name king jesus much stronger we can call on you things changes we can call on your name there's power in the name of jesus power in the name there is power in the name of jesus power in your name oh there is power in the name of jesus power in your name there is power in the name of jesus power in the name Yeah. 
Your name, your name is victory. All praise will rise to Christ our King. Your name, your name is victory. All praise will rise to Christ our
God, we just thank you so much for who you are. Church, I just want to encourage you right where you're at in your home, in your living room, in your bedroom. Would you just pray with us as we thank God for what he's doing in and through us in this moment in time. God, we thank you. You are a great God. You're a holy God. And on this Easter Sunday that we worship you and your son's resurrection, we just want to thank you so much for the plan that you've had this whole time to redeem us back into your family. God, we just pray for our church and anyone watching today that you would be with them in their home, God. God, we pray that you would be with them in spirit, God. We pray that you, your Holy Spirit would flood their place and that they would feel your presence. God, in this situation, we just want to pray for all those that are sick today in the hospital, God. We just want to pray for those in the ICU with the, the ventilators, God, and the whole situation, God. We just pray that your healing power would flood those hospitals, that people would see a difference in their bodies immediately, God, because of who you are and the, and the blood that was shed to heal, God. We, we claim those healings today. God, we pray for the families this week that have lost loved ones. This has been a very difficult week, and so God, we just pray that your peace that passes all understanding would move into these homes, God, would move into these situations, that we would see a new hope, a new a new perspective, God, that we would see, that we would just see peace, God. God, we pray for a hope and a love, God. We pray that you would comfort their hearts. God, we pray for all the first responders. We pray for all of those who are in the middle of this, who are serving, God. The doctors, the nurses, the firefighters, the police officers, all of those on the front lines, God. We pray for those in the grocery stores, God. We pray for those that are helping us just maintain order, God. And God, we pray for our government that you would move and have your way in them, God. God, we pray in this moment that you would just move in this situation, that your Holy Spirit would be known and that your way, your kingdom would be made on this earth just as it is in heaven. And God, we want to pray for a spiritual revival here, God. Not just on Staten Island, God, but on this planet. We really believe that as you focus our hearts in, that we will see something new rise up because we are truly focused on you in this time. God, we thank you for what you're doing. God, we pray that you would move. And we pray today as we center our heart around this idea and this, this moment in time called Easter, God, this resurrection time, that you would help us to see your love for us even more clearly. God, we thank you. We praise you. And we pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, church, I hope that you are as excited as we are for Easter this year. And this will be an Easter, no doubt, that we will never forget. The truth is, is that I've never experienced anything like this in all of my years. And I can tell you, these are the Easter, like this Easter especially will be an Easter that we tell our children's children about the time that we had to spend Easter in quarantine. Very, very interesting times, and I hope that in this moment you are well. I pray that God is moving in your homes. I pray that your relationships are growing stronger. And I also pray that in this moment, uh, all the things that are unsure will be made sure to you. I just have a few announcements for you before we dive into to our tithes and offerings. But uh, I want to encourage you, if you haven't noticed, we have not stopped being live, ICC has not stopped going live for you on all levels. So whether you're a, a parent of children, please make sure that you check out uh, our ICC Kids YouTube channel. If you have students between the ages of 12 and 18 in our, in our high school and junior high ministries, we've had ICC Youth live on Wednesdays and Fridays and really all, all sorts of days in between. We've been just having a bunch of fun online there and we we're actually seeing incredible growth. If you're a young adult, Anywhere between the ages of 18 to 28, we have our young adult small groups happening also on Instagram Live. And of course, all of our adult services, men's, women's, we have all sorts of things happening every single day of the week here for you on Facebook Live, on Instagram, Zoom meetings, all sorts of things happening. So please check in with us. I would say this, engage as much as you can. In this time where we're homebound and there's really uh, a sense of maybe a cabin fever stir crazy, find some time, set it aside, and engage. And one amazing way that you can engage right now is through the Facebook Live and the act of sharing this this post right so get down to the bottom of your screen there's an arrow that says share all you have to do is press it it'll go straight to your feed and everyone that follows you will see this and hopefully they'll join in and engage as well with the service here today amen i hope that some of you are saying amen right there in your living room 
Well, I want to thank you on behalf of all the staff here at ICC and the team here that is, is working diligently to make sure we are bringing as much content to you as we can. Just because you have been so faithful in your giving, in your engagement, and we want to continue to ask you to be faithful and generous as you already have been. And so today for tithes and offerings, I just want to tell you, people have been so great, even coming down and, and dropping off or mailing in their tithes and offerings. And you can do that if you wish. 1501 Richmond Avenue here on Staten Island, New York. Make sure uh, you, you, you send it in if that's the method that you want to use, but you don't even have to do that. You can go ahead and use our website. So you can go to iccnyc.org and go ahead and give that way. You can also text to give if you want to go ahead and do that. Super easy. All you have to do is text to the number 77977 the message ICC Central. They're going to text you back with a little link. You can go ahead and click that link and then follow the prompts. You can also use our app if you'd like. The app is amazing. Go ahead and download that in the iTunes store there. And uh, it's really, really simple to do that way. Amen. Listen, let me pray over your offering today. And then we're going to dive into the, the word that pastor has for us this, this Easter Sunday. God, we thank you for what you've given us. God, we pray even in this time that we could honor you and praise you for what you've given. And so, God, we honor you with our tithes and offerings today. God, we pray that you bless it, that you multiply it, and you advance your kingdom to the church that is ICC here on Staten Island. We love you. We appreciate you. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you as you give. We want to thank you for your generosity and your giving over the last number of weeks during this difficult time. And it's because of your giving that we've been able to bless. Uh, this past week, we are able to bring lunch to a medical clinic right close to the church here and, and to bless them and to pray with them. Uh, next week, we're going to be blessing the, the, the police department uh, and, and provide lunch for them. So we're continuing to reach the city and touch the world for Jesus Christ. And we just thank you for your generous giving to us. I want you to turn with me in your Bibles to Mark chapter 16. And I want to talk about Jesus is the resurrection and the life. We're living in a day when the things that we hear so much about is about death, about disease, about sickness, about social distancing, about being quarantined in our house. And it doesn't seem like there's much life and much hope and much joy. But I'm so glad this Easter Sunday, it's all about Jesus is the resurrection and the life. And over this year, we've been looking at this theme of just Jesus and I want to bring this Easter message down to the basics that it's just about Jesus. In John chapter 11 and verse 25, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. That's the hope that we have as believers. In Mark chapter 16 and beginning at verse 1, we read there, when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, and Salome brought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. And they were saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? And looking up, they saw that the stone had been rolled back. It was very large. And entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, dressed in a white robe, and they were alarmed. And he said to them, do not be alarmed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him, but go tell his disciples and Peter that he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. And they went out and fled from the tomb for trembling and astonishment had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone for they were afraid. Easter is a day of great celebration for the church of Jesus Christ. 
It's a day we celebrate that Jesus was not on the cross and Jesus was not on the tomb, but he rose again on the third day. The greatest miracle of Christianity is that Jesus died and that Jesus rose again. And all around the world today, Christians are celebrating the resurrection of Jesus. It's different than probably any Easter we've ever gone through before. You know, Easter Sunday for pastors is really the Super Bowl of Sundays. That when churches are packed and people come that don't usually come and visitors come and more people accept Jesus Christ on Easter Sunday than, than many other Sundays combined. And so today is not a, a, a service where the church is full. In fact, the church is empty because we're not able to gather together. But that doesn't cancel Easter just because we're not in church, just because there's no Easter, Easter hunts and, and because there's no Easter clothes and, and because of all of these things. It doesn't cancel Easter because Jesus is still alive. He is arisen from the dead. And that's why we celebrate, whether it's in our home, whether you're home all alone, whether you're in the nursing home, uh, whether you're by yourself, Jesus is alive. And that's the reason why we can celebrate this Easter. See, what difference does Easter really make? What difference does Easter make in 2020 when it's so different than every other Easter we've ever gone through? Well, in Mark chapter 16, we read there uh, that Jesus has been crucified and buried and hope is all gone and the disciples have given up and, and, and they're hiding. They they're, they're don't know what the future is gonna have in store for them. Try to imagine what the followers of Jesus must have been feeling and dealing with and just like the thoughts that we have during this virus and how long are we going to be locked up and how long are we not going to be able to go to school or go to work or go to church and, and there's so many questions and there's not a lot of answers and, and, and the disciples were grieving and they had no idea what the future was going to be like. One, if they ask questions, is life over? How many people are asking, will we ever get back to normal? And I don't know if we'll ever will get back to normal. How many of us have been there over the last couple of weeks with this virus and maybe like the disciples were discouraged and maybe we're depressed and maybe we've lost hope about the future and you know, my job is gone, my family is gone, my loved one is no longer with us. Uh, maybe I have the virus, maybe I don't know what tomorrow holds and and maybe we've, we've given up on Jesus and maybe we've given up on God and maybe we've given up on hope and, and we say, God, where are you and how have you let me down? But the resurrection is not just about Jesus rising from the dead, but it's about his followers that walked with him during that time. So let's go back to that resurrection morning in Mark 16 and let me give you a few pointers. First of all, we see the walking of his followers. It says in Mark 16, verses one and two, when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of James and Salome, bought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. Well, why are these women walking to the tomb while it's still dark early in the morning? They get up and they prepare the spices and they're on their way to the cemetery and they're going to anoint the body of Jesus with these spices. And why were they going to the cemetery when it's dark and it's early morning and, and carrying these spices? According to commentaries, the main reason a dead body was anointed with spices was to control the smell of decomposition. The Jewish people did not practice embalming and the spices were a way to hide the smell of death. And so the fact that the woman brought the spices to the tomb was because they didn't believe that Jesus would rise from the dead. All they thought of was Jesus is dead and Jesus is gone and we got to do what we normally do. We got to take spices and anoint the body of Jesus. Imagine what the mood was as they were walking to the tomb. 
What was the conversation that was going on between these women? And as they got closer to the place where they laid the body of Jesus, what was going through their hearts? What was going through their minds as, as they approached the tomb? Put yourself in the story. Just a couple of days earlier, they saw Jesus walking down the Via Dolorosa. Just a few days earlier, they saw Jesus being whipped and scourged and beaten. Just a couple of hours ago, they saw Jesus being hung on an old rugged tree. They saw the words that Jesus said from the cross. They they heard the words that it is finished and, and and then he took his last breath. They were there watching him as they lowered the body of Jesus off the cross and and they covered his body in the linen and they took him to the tomb. Their lives were devastated by the death of Jesus just like many who are watching me today. Maybe your life has been devastated over the last number of weeks and things that you thought would never happen have happened and, and now our lives are devastated. And these women were in shock and disbelief and not thinking clearly and not understanding what they are going through. And many, many of those in our church this week have lost loved ones to this virus and talking with them on the phone and connecting with them and hearing the tears and hearing the sorrow and hearing the questions and the fear and, and the anxiety. And I understand that when I, I remember when my daughter died and, and the unbelief, this can't really be happening. The shock of it when I heard that my daughter was no longer alive. The disbelief, hey God, where are you? How could you allow this to happen? I remember those hours where I wasn't thinking clearly and, you know, and I cannot remember a lot of the, the details of all of that couple of weeks in the beginning. I'm sure how that's how these women must have felt and many of you are feeling as well. These women are walking that long and winding road and and they're walking to the tomb and and many of us have walked that walk before and this is a road you have to walk when your faith is being tested and even as believers over these last couple of weeks during this virus, our faith has been tested. Our faith has been rocked. Our faith has been, where are we going to trust in? This is where life has turned to disappointments on that road. It was on that road that Easter morning that life doesn't turn out the way we planned and the, and the women didn't think about, hey, this is what I signed up for. This is what I expected. This is when you go through tragedy and crisis and it makes no sense. And man, the last three weeks, it doesn't make any sense. And we can't understand it, how a little virus can destroy so much of our world and close our nation down and close the world down and close traveling down and close restaurants and banks and everything else down, close the church. Who would ever imagine that the church would be closed down? We're just like these women. Death is final. The world believes that death is the ending. And the world says it's all over. We're never going to get back. And death has defeated the person that died. But Jesus does not look at death that way. Jesus wants us to know, hey, death is only temporary. Death is just changing of addresses. Death is just stepping stone to a new eternal life. And And if you know Jesus Christ, what happened this week, what happened for those who have passed away, if they know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, they're not lost, they're not passed away, they just haven't gone to a grave, but they have graduated to a place called heaven where they're walking on the streets of glory today. They are with their Lord and their Savior who died for them. And friends, really, it is a celebration and not defeat. That's what Easter means. It's a celebration celebration of life, a celebration of hope, a celebration of joy. For God's word says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And I'm so thankful that on this Easter Sunday, we have the hope of Jesus Christ. How many other people did not see what these women saw? Because they were still home. But these women made that journey to the tomb. The disciples were not there. They were grieving. They missed what Jesus said he would do. And many of us may miss Jesus this Easter because of things that are going on around us. But the second thing I see is the worry of mankind. 
How many of us over the last number of weeks have been full of worry? How many of us have been full of anxiety? How many of us have been full of fear and say, man, am I getting the virus? And man, I better cover up and I better stay away. We better do all these things and the social distancing and and all that we have to do and, and the mask and the gloves and the Purell and all of that. We need to do that. But how many of us have been overcome by worry? We see these women go into the tomb and they're full of worry. It says in Mark 16 in verse three, And they were saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? These women are walking. They're not hiding back like the disciples or other believers, but they're walking that journey. They're walking on that road to the tomb. And as they're walking and they're discussing and they're talking about what's going to happen, we see that there was some worry in their hearts and in their minds. They're talking about Who's going to roll the stone away from the tomb? Who's going to help us to get to the body of Jesus so that we can anoint his body with spices? Who's going to move the stone that is so big that we cannot lift it ourselves? Who's going to remove the obstacle that keeps us from getting to Jesus? The place where Jesus is is blocked and how are we going to get to him? How many of us worry about the stones and the obstacles and the rocks that are in our lives that that keep us from getting to Jesus? I don't know what stone is in your life that's, that's keeping you from Jesus, but it may be the stone of despair and discouragement and depression. And we know we hear it on the news of how many people are overwhelmed with depression during this virus. And how many of us are full of despair and discouragement when we hear of somebody else being taken into the hospital? And and I understand that as I got a text from my sister this week that that my mother has the fever and there's people in the nursing home and and you're you're not able to go, you're not able to talk and you don't know and and you can become so overwhelmed with despair and, and discouragement. How many of us are battling worry today over the difficult circumstances and maybe our stone is the loss of a job or, or the loss of a, of a, 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 a physical heal, healing or the loss of, of, of things in our lives. We say, God, where are you? And it's a stone that's in front of the tomb. Maybe your stone is the stone of a broken heart this week because of the passing of a family member. And the stone that all you see is my mom is gone, my dad is gone, my my husband or wife is gone. And what the stone says is that those outside cannot get in. See, death is a great cause of worry and despair because death separates us. Death comes and shatters our lives, but the stone was rolled away. See, death could not keep Jesus in the tomb. Because of this, we have hope in heaven. Because if you're facing the stone of despair and discouragement and death is Resurrection Sunday, listen to what the resurrection means when we are full of worry about our future. We read in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and beginning at verse 50, these words. I tell you this, brothers, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. At the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised imperishable and we shall be changed. For this perishable body must put on imperishable and this mortal body must put on immortality. When the perishable puts on the imperishable, the mortal puts on immortality. Then shall come to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin and the power of sin is the law. But here is the victory that we have. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. 
Therefore, my beloved brothers, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. Hey, the reality is nobody can roll the stone away. Those women couldn't remove that stone. The stone in front of your life, the despair, the discouragement, the the loss, the emptiness, the brokenness, the sorrow, whatever stone is in front of your life today, you may not be able to move the stone because the stone is too big for you. But I'm so thankful that on that Easter Sunday, Jesus moved the stone and he walked out of the tomb. And friends, Jesus can move your stone today because the same Jesus that rose 2,000 years ago is the same Jesus that lives within his followers today. See, we cannot roll the stone of despair away. We can't roll the stone of death away. We cannot roll the stone of sin away. We cannot roll the stone of bondage and addiction away. We cannot roll the stone of fear and turmoil and worry away. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Man, are we like these women? We worry over the things that are out of our control. We're so consumed with the things that we cannot change in our life. But these women did what? They got up and they walked towards the stone. They walked towards the tomb. They were worried. They were fearful. They were saddened. They were full of despair but they faced the very thing that they could not control. And today, I don't know what you're facing. And you may say, I can't face it. I can't take another step. But just like those women who walk towards the tomb, we can walk towards the tomb because the tomb is empty because Jesus rose again. There'll be times that we need to walk by faith and not by sight and not by our emotions. And we may be filled with fear, but we need to walk by faith and not by sight. We may be depressed, but we need to walk by faith and not by sight. We may be worried and full of anxiety, but we need to get up and walk by faith no matter what we're facing today because the devil plays games with us. The devil wants to get in our minds and in our hearts and in our spirits saying you're crazy for believing in Jesus. You're wasting your time to serve God. You will never see the miracle. You will never see an answer. You'll never see your children come to Christ. The miracle will never happen and the stone can create a spirit of fear and of worry. What stone is in front of your tomb? Do not allow anything to keep you from Jesus today because Jesus is the resurrection and the life. John 14, 1 says, do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 25, Jesus tells us these words, that these are the words from the Lord for somebody today. Therefore, I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into bonds, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his life? Why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin, yet I tell you that even Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Do not be anxious, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these other things will be added unto you. Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious about itself, sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Jesus tells us in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, come to me, all you labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. See, this Easter Sunday, God wants to give you some rest. 
He doesn't want you being worried and fearful and anxious. He wants to give you some rest. He says, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Paul tells us from a prison cell when he didn't know if he was going to make it through the next day or the next couple of days without being killed. And yet Paul in a prison cell writes these words, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. See, the stone in front of the tomb was rolled away when those women gathered. And if the stone could not keep Jesus in, do we really think that our issue will keep Jesus from us? I'm so glad your sin will not keep Jesus from you. I'm so glad today that your sickness will not keep Jesus from you. I'm so thankful that your financial condition will not keep Jesus from you. The same Jesus that walked out of that tomb on that Easter Sunday morning is the same Jesus that walks towards you and to me today. And you say, well, Jesus couldn't love me. Let me tell you, you are of value to him and that he sent his son to die on the cross for you to forgive you of your sins. And Jesus isn't uh, 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 turned off by what you've done. Jesus loved you so much that he came looking for you, came desiring you and wants relationship with you. I don't need to worry today because there's a Jesus that wants relationship with me. The third thing I see in this portion of scripture in Mark chapter 16 is the worship of Jesus. See, because Jesus is alive, that's why we worship him. I'm not worshiping religion. I'm not worshiping ICC. I'm not worshiping something that's dead. I worship a risen savior. He is alive. He is alive and he's worthy of our worship. It says in Mark 16 in verse 4, and looking up and saw that the stone had been rolled away, it was very large. These women ran to the tomb worried about the stone. Who's going to roll the stone away? But the thing that they were worrying about was already taken care of by Jesus. How many things are we concerned about today? And we're worrying about what's going to happen and how long is this uh, quarantine going to be on and how long are we going to have to shelter at home and how long is this virus going to go on and when will the kids go back to school and when will the job be open and when will our government get working again and when will we be able to gather together as a church and, and we're worried about all these things. How many things in life are we anxious about and the Lord tells us what to do? He says, cast all your cares upon me because I care for you. See, that if you are worried about it, it's enough to pray about it. If you're worried about it, it's enough to begin to worship the Lord. See, the thing that they were worrying about that Easter Sunday morning, the Lord went ahead of them and did the impossible that they could never do for themselves. And the reality is this Easter Sunday, that resurrection tells me, that I cannot do it for myself, I cannot fix myself, I cannot fix my sin, I cannot change the situation in my life, but there is a God that does all things impossible, there's nothing impossible for him, and so today, whatever is that impossibility in my life, that thing that is so big and, and so demanding and so uh, controlling of my thoughts, my hearts, my emotions, my spirit, I want you to know this Easter Sunday that there is a God that rolled a stone away and that Jesus walked out and he was alive. They discovered that the impossible obstacles that are too great for us were already taken care of by Almighty God. Our God is a God of all power today. It says in Nahum chapter one and verse five, the mountains quake before him. The hills melt, the earth heaves before him, the world and all who dwell in it. We read in Matthew 17, 20, Jesus said to his disciples, because of your little faith, for truly I say to you, if you have faith like the grain of a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there and it will move and nothing, nothing will be impossible for you. 
We read in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 11, and Jesus answered them, have faith in God. Truly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be taken up and thrown into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says will come to pass, it will be done for him. Therefore I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. Those women discovered that first resurrection Sunday that nothing was impossible for God. The resurrection is a miracle of the impossible with man, but it's possible with God. No matter what you're facing today, I don't care how big you think it is and how impossible it is. And maybe it's the virus, maybe it's a respirator, maybe it's a job, maybe it's your kids, maybe it's your marriage. I don't know what your impossible situation is, but this Easter Sunday resurrection means that nothing is impossible for our God. These four women show us a picture of our lives as well. What we are worrying about is all really for nothing. We waste all the time being anxious and perplexed and confused and fearful and God took care of it. And the God that took care of that very thing is the same God that will take care of us. What is God trying to say to us this Resurrection Sunday? How does it apply to us in 2020? First of all, my responsibility is simply to go after Jesus to go to where Jesus is. My responsibility is not to roll the stone away. It's not to roll the mountain away. It's not to remove the obstacles. That's not my job. My job is to go after Jesus, to go to where Jesus is and to let Jesus do the miracle. That's what Matthew 6, says, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things shall be added unto you. See, my responsibility is to trust in Jesus even when I don't have all the answers. See, over this this, uh, last couple of weeks uh, during this virus, there's been a lot of questions. We say, Lord, how can I trust you? See, we want the answers, and sometimes God says, no, I'm not going to give you the answer. I want you to trust in me. I want you to hold steady in me. I want you to look to me not to the answer. The answers may come, but God is looking for us to trust him when we don't know what to do. As that song says, that I'll trust him even when the waters don't part. I'll trust him when I don't see the answer. See, trust is so important in this spiritual walk. And it tells us in Psalm chapter nine in verse 10, and those who know your name put their trust in you. For you, O Lord, have not forsaken those who seek you. Psalm 37 tells us, verses four and through six, delight yourself in the Lord. See, if when I go after the Lord, when I worship the Lord, when I rejoice in the Lord, when I put my hope and trust in the Lord, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord, trust in him and he will act. He will bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the noonday. In Psalm 112, in verse 7, it says, He is not afraid of bad news. His heart is firm because he's trusting in the Lord. Man, I know that over these last three or four weeks, I've ever, almost every email that I've gotten or, or text or call it's because someone is either going in the hospital or someone is dying or, or someone is having trouble. Or, or, and thank God for those who have been healed and those who are out of the hospital. And thank God for those testimonies. But the reality is, is bad news is a part of what we're facing right now. But this Easter Sunday, I don't have bad news for you. But I have good news for you that if we will put our hope and our faith and our trust in the Lord that we will not be moved, that we will not be shaken, that we will not run, that we will not say, Lord, I'm walking away from you, but Lord, my hope and my trust is in you. It says in Psalm 28 and verse seven, the Lord is my strength and my shield. In him my heart trusts and I am helped. My heart exalts and with my song, I give thanks to him. 
And on this Easter Sunday, I know you're hurting. I know there's frustration. I know there's all these obstacles in our way but we can still praise him and worship him because he is worthy of all of our praise and our our worship today. I love what Isaiah 26 and verse three says. He'll keep in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him because he trusts in you. My responsibility is not to worry about how God is gonna do it. My responsibility is that I'm gonna trust God and know that he's gonna take care of it. Man, my responsibility is not to worry. My responsibility is to trust. Oh, my responsibility is not to worry about tomorrow, but to love Jesus and trust Jesus today. See, this Resurrection Sunday, we don't need to live a life of fear and worry and anxiety because Jesus is alive. Look with me in Mark chapter 16 and beginning at verse four. And we read there, and looking up, they saw that the stone had been rolled away, but it was very large. Can you imagine the reaction of those women on that Easter Sunday morning? And the stone has been rolled away, and the women go into the tomb, and they see a young man sitting on the right side, dressed in white robe, and they were alarmed. They go into the tomb, expecting that the dead body of Jesus is gonna be in that tomb. And when they go in there, they see that the cloths have been folded and and that there is no body there and Jesus walked out of the tomb. The thing that they thought they were gonna see was no longer there and no one was expecting a resurrection and the only ones that go to the tomb are the women and where are the disciples And, and even the women are bringing spices to anoint the decaying body of Jesus. And why does the scripture tell us this in detail? because the resurrection was inconceivable to the disciples and the followers of Jesus, even though Jesus said that he would rise again. The resurrection was impossible for them to believe, as it is for many of us today. How many people that even go to church don't believe that the Bible is true? How many really don't believe in miracles today? How many people really don't believe that I am saved or I'm born again or that Jesus can heal us or Jesus can deliver us or Jesus can provide for us? See, worship is all about lifting up the name of Jesus. And when we lift up the name of Jesus, he says he will draw all men unto him. But one last thing in closing today. The wonderful reach that Jesus has for every one of us. It says in verse seven, this is an amazing scripture. But go tell his disciples and Peter that he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. That's amazing. That that Jesus says, go tell my disciples and he individually mentions the name of Peter. Peter was the one that denied Jesus before he went to the cross. And can you imagine when Jesus rose from the dead and he tells the women, go and tell my disciples and tell Peter. Why would God reach out to Peter? Man, you say, well, pastor, why would God reach out to me and why would God care about me? I have failed like Peter. I have denied him like Peter. I live with guilt. I've messed up. I'm so unworthy. And the angel says to these women, you go tell my disciples and you tell Peter. That's amazing that God understood where Peter was. Jesus loves Peter and knows that Peter was devastated by how he lived those last few days. He understood that Peter denied him and Peter is a great example for us. And if we would be honest, there's a lot of Peter in every one of us that that Peter was so impulsive, he would act before he would think. How many of us are like that? Peter was a coward and ashamed and denied Jesus before the the, the girl and before the servant. Peter was selfish and self-centered and how many of us are, are the very same way? Peter was conceited and Peter took his eyes off of Jesus and began to sink and Peter was cursing and Peter was weeping and full of guilt and Peter was hanging with the wrong crowd and 
I wonder if Peter wondered if he could ever be forgiven by Jesus. I wonder how Peter must have felt when he watched Jesus hanging on the cross and as Jesus was beaten and bloodied in the crown of thorns and he took his last breath and died on the cross. I wonder what was going through Peter's mind. And so when the angel tells the woman to go tell his disciples and Peter that it's a resurrection word for Peter and for you and for me, that he was telling Peter, hey, I rose again and I want to do a resurrection in your life, Peter. Jesus wanted Peter to know, hey, Peter, you failed me, but I give you a word of forgiveness. Peter, you are discouraged, but I have a word of encouragement for you. Peter, I want you to come to me because I am the resurrection and the life. And God is still the great rebounder. Uh, you know, we, I played basketball a, a lot of my life. And, and you know, and, and, and rebounding is so important. There's rebounding drills that we, we would practice in college. And you'd have to go up and grab the ball and, and put the ball back up and put it in the hoop. I'm so glad that Jesus is a great rebounder. How many of us feel like Peter this Resurrection Sunday and you feel like a failure, you live with regrets and guilt and, and it can become so paralyzing in your life and you say, God could never love me, God could never forgive me, God could never save me. I like what John Maxwell says, you can fail backwards or you can fail forward. The choice is up to you and the choice is up to me. And there are some people that have messed up, some people that have sinned and they're fallen backwards and they're away from God and, and they don't feel God could ever love them or, or forgive them. But today, I want to fail when I fail, fail forward. That there's a God that's reaching out to me like he reached out to Peter. That there's a God that loves you just where you're at and that someone said it this way, failure is not fatal. Let, let's understand something in closing this Resurrection Sunday. Failure happens to every single one of us. There is not one person who is watching this video, watching this service this morning that hasn't failed. There's not one person in America or in any nation in the world that is without sin. We've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But Proverbs 24, 16 says, the godly man may trip seven times, but they will get up again. I want to encourage you this Easter Sunday, Jesus got up out of that tomb and walked out. And today you can get up because the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells within you. Don't you stay laying down there in that guilt, in that sin, in that, in that addiction. But today is Resurrection Sunday and you can get up again because Jesus is with you and Jesus will be in you. The Lord helps us and holds us even when we fail. We feel, how could God ever love me? Because I love what Psalm 37 says, the Lord directs the steps of the godly. He delights in every detail of their lives. Though they stumble, they never fall, for the Lord holds them by the hand. The Lord holds us by our hand. When you fail, the Lord is there. He doesn't let you go. He doesn't say you've gone too far and he lets you go. He's here holding our hand. Here is the point, even when we fail, not only does God still love me, but God will hold my hand and pick me out. Another thing, when we fail, it's just Jesus. When we fail and we, we fail, all the Easter means is it's about Jesus. Jesus is the resurrection and the light. Paul battled this over and over. It says in Romans chapter seven, verse 15, I don't really understand myself. Man, how many of us don't understand ourselves? You know, we have this battle that's going on in us. I want to do right, but I can't do right. I don't want to do wrong, but I do wrong. And, and, and Paul was saying, I don't really understand myself or I want to do what is right, but I don't do it. Instead, I do what I hate. Oh, what a miserable person I am who will free me from this life that is dominated by sin and death. Thank God, he says, the answer is in Jesus Christ, our Lord. The answer is Jesus. When we fail, Jesus forgives us. I'm so glad today that Jesus is the one that forgives us. 
It says in 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now, we're going to fall. We're going to fail. But we don't need to be destroyed by our past. We don't need to be destroyed by our sin. Confess your sins to Jesus and the blood of Jesus forgives us and cleanses us. The problem is me. Jesus forgives me. But maybe you need to forgive yourself today. Oh, when we fail, we don't have to live with condemnation. Man, I'm telling you, Easter Sunday tells me that there's no guilt and there's no condemnation. I love what Romans chapter 8 tells us. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death. Man, condemnation comes from the enemy. Condemnation comes from people. Condemnation can come even from church people. Condemnation can come from family. Condemnation can come from religious people. But I'm so glad today that God's word tells me there is therefore now no condemnation, no guilt in for those who are in Christ Jesus. Man, we may want to beat ourselves up. People may want to beat us up. The enemy may want to beat us up. But Easter Sunday tells me that there is no more condemnation there is no more guilt to those who are in Christ Jesus when we fail we can begin to live in the grace of Jesus the resurrection shows us that it's all about the grace of Jesus that Jesus paid the price it tells me in 2 Corinthians 12 but he said to me my grace is sufficient for you for my power is made perfect in weakness therefore I will boast all the more gladly for my weaknesses so that the power of Christ may rest on me friends this morning we can live in grace it says for the sake of Christ then I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities. For when I am weak, and then I am strong. See, that's the grace. That's what Jesus brings into our life. Thank God for his grace this Easter Sunday that I don't have to live the way I used to live. The resurrection shows me the length, the breadth, and the depth of God's amazing love and grace for you and for me. The resurrection that Easter Sunday shows me that Jesus is my strength. If death cannot keep him down, then my failure cannot keep him out. See, the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead, the very same spirit that went into that tomb on that first Easter Sunday morning, the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead is the same spirit that lives within me. I'm so glad this morning that I'm not serving an external religion, but that I have the power and the grace and the power of the spirit. The same spirit that raised Christ up from the dead is the same spirit that lives and dwells dwells within us and that's why we can walk in victory today friends the Lord is our strength where where would we be if it wasn't for the Lord giving us his resurrection strength none of us could make it but every one of us can make it today because of his grace and because of his spirit oh the resurrection shows me that Jesus gives me mercy every time I fall I'm so glad for Lamentations chapter 3 The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Aren't you glad for the faithfulness of God? God's faithful. He was faithful that first Easter Sunday, and he's faithful Easter Sunday 2020. And lastly, the resurrection tells me that I can forget my past. Peter He says, you go tell Peter, and Jesus forgave Peter, and Peter was forgiven, and Peter didn't have to live in his past. Peter, you failed me, but the resurrection shows me that Jesus thought of Peter. He thought of Peter, how he failed, and Jesus thinks of me, and when I've failed, and when I've sinned, and when I've messed up. Paul understands uh, about what that past is, but Paul tells us in Philippians chapter 3, verse 13, brothers, 
I do not consider that I have made it my own, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on towards the goal for the price of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. See, that's the good news of the resurrection. There is one thing that sin cannot do. It can't make Jesus stop loving you. That no matter what you've done, Jesus knows me at my worst. He knows me at my ugliest. He knows me at my, my absolute worst, but yet he still comes looking for me. And there's a Lord this Easter Sunday that wants to save you. He wants to restore you. He wants to renew you. He wants to revive you. Friends, this Easter Sunday, where are you on that journey? Have you sinned? Have you failed God? Have you messed up? Have you like the women and you say, I'm going, but I'm full of worry and anxiety? I want to let you know the same Jesus that rose again 2,000 years ago is the same Jesus that walks all over Staten Island today. He's walking into your home right now and his word says, behold, I stand at the door and knock and if any man opens the door, I will come in. The reality is today, this Easter Sunday, 2020, different than any other Easter we've ever had. But today, if I will open my heart's door to him, Jesus will come in and bring his resurrection power. I'm going to ask you while you're sitting in your living room, around your kitchen table, wherever you're watching this service today, if you would just bow your heads and close your eyes. And listen and pray with me if you've never asked Jesus to come into your life. There is a Jesus that not only died on the cross to forgive you of your sin, but he was taken down off the cross and put into a tomb. And I remember just a few months ago that I went into that tomb when we were in Israel and walked into that tomb and you walk into that tomb where Jesus was buried and man, you think this is where Jesus was. But guess what? There was no body when I walked in there because Jesus rose again. You don't need to be death. You don't need to be defeated. You don't need to be discouraged because the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead now dwells within you. But today, I have a choice, you have a choice. What am I gonna do with the resurrected Savior? I need to open my heart, I need to open my spirit, and I want you to say this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I realize, Lord, that I have failed, that I have sinned, that I have messed up. And Lord, I'm trying to take care of life in my own strength and in my own power. But Lord, today, Lord, I realize that you died on the cross to forgive me of my sins. Lord, they took you off the cross and they put you in the tomb. But Lord, I thank you, Lord, that on that third day you rose again. And that tells me, Lord, that the stone was rolled away and the stone that is in my life, the sin, the bondage, the, the addictions, the failure, the worry, the anxiety, that thing that keeps me from getting to you. Lord, all I need to do is to come to you and confess my sins and ask you to come into my life. Father, I pray, Lord, today that people would accept you. And Lord, that you would forgive us of our sins. But Lord, I thank you also that we serve the resurrection and the life. Father, I pray your blessing over each and every one that's watching this service. I pray, Lord, that they would know the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead now dwells within them. Lord, we don't know what tomorrow holds, but because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. And I pray, oh God, that Lord, in the midst of this virus, we would be able to exalt and to worship you because Jesus is the resurrection and the life. I pray your blessing over each and every one. And Lord, we'll give you the praise, the honor, and the glory for we ask it in Jesus' name, amen. I wanna thank you for tuning in and watching our Easter online at ICC. I pray that when we're able to gather back together that you will come and if you don't have a church home, consider making ICC your church home. 
We're one church with many campuses all over Staten Island. Uh, and during this crisis, during this virus, and you're not able, if you would connect with me, you can contact me at pastorsquib at gmail.com. I would encourage you that if you've asked Jesus Christ to come into your life today, that you would just email me at pastorsquib at gmail.com and let me know that you made the decision to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. If you're online, you can just text it there uh, and you can say, I accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. We want to be able to connect with you. We want to be able to show you what, what it means to follow Jesus, not just asking him to come into your life. And so I want to thank you once again. May God bless you. May God strengthen you. And may the resurrection power of Jesus bless you and encourage you today. God bless you. And we'll see you again real soon.